tonight's guest is going back to the basics. Find out what I'm talking about next on Connecting Our Community. <music> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Connecting Our Community. I'm Karen Allen. Today's guest is Sheila Cry, CCP. Let's find out what that means. She directs two after-school programs at middle schools. Sheila, thank you so much for joining us, and explain what is CCP. It's what we got under your name, too. CCP is a designation by the International Association of Culinary Professionals, and this is a group that it's an, originally an association of cooking teachers. Now it represents pretty much all of the jobs in the cooking, well, not cooking, food and beverage industry. Does this mean you went to the Cordon Bleu? No, it, it means that I have the experience and I submitted a very detailed resume of my experience and I took a big long test and I passed. Oh, so But so did Julia Child and Jacques Pepin. There's, so. You could still go there. Um, let me ask you another thing. Um, when you do this, does this also mean certify you to be a personal chef if, if, if you wanted to? If you wanted to. It, you know, um, f food is an interesting industry, especially teaching cooking. If you think you can teach cooking, you can hang out your shingle. There is no uh, license that you need to apply for. And, and that's why it's important to have a designation like mm -hmm. Certified mm -hmm. Culinary Professional because it, it means that if you take a cooking class from this person, the chances are they know what they're talking mm -hmm. about. So tell me about this uh, after-school cooking program that you've got going. You've got this in two schools. And it's after school, so they have to stay later to do it? Is it That's is it, right. So this is voluntary? Oh, no, no. This is a, a paid position through grant funding through the uh, Montgomery County Collaboration Council for Children, Youth, and Families. I meant for the kids. They, they're oh, not yes. required to go? Yes. Uh, they, it's completely on their own? Yes, it's, it's, um, and it's free for their families. Oh, that's wonderful. That makes it a lot easier. Yeah. What do you think, uh, this is middle school, so seven, sixth, seventh, and eighth? Six, seven, eight. What What are they, you know, able to get from your from your cooking course? It's hands on, right? It's definitely hands on, and it's it's two hours a meeting, one meeting a week, and there's two 14 week sessions. So it's most of the school year, and I I'm going to you know let my families know that I'm talking with you tonight. So hopefully, when You'll the get program, more people. So they'll tune in, and, and, and they can possibly even give us feedback. Now, let me tell you what, what they learned. They learned some basics about how to be safe in the kitchen. They learned how to be safe with sharp knives and heat sources. They learned some basics like how to uh, slice and dice and, and mince. And, and uh, we, we do either a main dish and a side dish or a main dish and a dessert. And we try to alternate week to week. And, you know, each dish may, be, may have component parts. So, you know, a class with 15 or 20 young people uh, can really do a lot in two hours' time. It sounds quite comprehensive. It's, and in fact, it is one of an array of programs offered through an umbrella program called Excel Beyond the Belt. Oh. And uh, that is in seven different middle schools across mm -hmm. Montgomery County. And that, I guess, is to further these kids on life skills and things, I Yeah, assume. yeah. Uh, um, there's also STEM-type programs and uh, uh, arts and dance and, uh, you know, just an array of programs, like you say, life skills. I would say cooking uh, really encourages cooperation and mm -hmm. teamwork, uh, in addition to cooking itself being a life skill. It sounds like a wonderful program. I mean, and do you find that kids are a little reluctant at first, but once they get going, they love it? Indeed, I do. And in fact, we start out with uh, uh, plastic knives, like lettuce knives, mm -hmm. so that they won't be intimidated. 
but gradually we show them how to, what to do with their hands, and when they're ready to progress, then, then uh, we show them how to work with real chef's knives. And no trips to the emergency room. That's a goal. Yeah, so far. knock on wood. Right. We, I've been doing this since 2011, and we've had no serious injuries That's so far. That's good. Because yeah. I think knife skills are really important, and not having a sharp knife, which is the case in my kitchen, is a real problem. You can really hurt yourself, and, um, and you can cry a lot with our yeah. hands. We might be doing that in the next segment, actually. I have to keep myself. <laughs> anyway, um, so how many students are in the program um, that you teach in any one school? Uh, there's a maximum of 20 in each. So 20 per class? Yes. Are yeah. they 6th, 7th, and 8th mixed? or? Yes, all or mixed. So it gives them a chance to make new friends. And uh, particularly, you know, people that they might not necessarily hang out mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. ordinarily. So um, uh, that's part of the fun of it, getting to know one another. Are they recommended by teachers for this, or is this something they totally sign up on their own? Both. Sometimes a counselor says, I think this student could benefit from this program or a teacher that knows our work. But uh, many times, you know, we go to back to school night, we talk to the parents, oh, and, right. and uh, next week I'm going to recruit during lunch for session two. And, and uh, so we, we talk one on one with the young people and let them know what, what we do. Plus, there's word of mouth. The young people, you know, some some of my young chefs have been members in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So they can keep coming back again and again. Yeah. By the time they graduate to high school, they're ready to pack their own lunch completely, <laughs> including <laughs> cooking and baking. Baking, too? Baking, too. That is wonderful. So they have things to take home to their family. Yep. That must be very exciting. Though, samples. In those days. Yeah, samples, right. Okay. Because I remember when my kids took what they called facts at school, they would have little little projects they would bring home. They'd be very proud of themselves. So there's a lot of satisfaction that these kids uh, gain from completion. You know, interestingly, we meet in the former home economics classrooms in these two schools. And in both schools, there is no facts, mm -hmm. family and consumer science, during the school day. Mm -hmm. So we bring back the cooking part. Right. After school. Right. Back in the day, it was called home economics. Right. So when you, I heard you saying that, I was very happy to have someone. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like you said, FACTS, uh, which stands for what again? Family and Consumer Science. Yeah, that um, is what they call it. So my kids kind of stared at me when I went home ec. They're like, it's FACTS, but whatever. You know, times change. Back in the day, they did not have straight cooking like this where you could really learn some skills. Right. Do you find the children, these kids, these students, go home and, you know, brag to their parents and start cooking up some stuff at home? It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Um, sometimes they tell me that they did, and, and at the end of each session, we give them a cookbook that we've printed and bound for them. That's a great them. idea. And uh, the hope is that they will continue to make these things. In addition, you know, they can take a recipe home if they like it. Sometimes I, I can tell what were their favorite recipes by the number of ones that they take home with them. I think creating a recipe book, a cookbook at the end that you've bound together is a great idea, a sense of accomplishment. You know, I can, I can see that would be fantastic. Um, how do you get, um, if you're a parent, how do you get your kid into these classes? Is it any, any application process or anything yeah, that you Yeah, there is an application process and um, uh, as I said, we're just getting ready for session two. So you would have to be in one of these seven middle schools that has Excel Beyond the Bell. And for my program in particular, either Nielsville or Roberto Clemente. But Those are the two schools <coughs> you teach at. Are there other chefs teaching at other schools? Yeah. Or chefs or? Programs, after yeah. school programs. And do they have these at high schools too? Uh, uh, there used to be one called Through the Kitchen Door, but that, as far as I know, is uh, not active at the moment. So they have to get all their skills and education on How cooking in middle school. However, there, there are adult cooking classes through the Montgomery County Recreation Department, and I'm beginning to give some classes through them. Oh, wow, you're just all over the place. 
Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, though, because you love what you do, right? Yes. Well, how did you get into cooking and, and baking to begin with? Uh, well, I grew up in a, um, a culinary family. Um, my folks were uh, children of Dutch immigrants in the Middle West, and they did a lot of home cooking. Uh, my mother made seven loaves of bread every week. Wow. And if, well, there were five children. And, and uh, if you were lucky enough to visit on bed, bread baking day, you might go home with a loaf of bread. Uh, and my dad liked to pickle, and uh, uh, he would do it in the basement where, or at the garage on a camp stove where it was cooler in the summer. And, uh, so did your siblings also go into the food prep uh, and, uh, industry, or just you? Uh, I have one sister who has done some catering, uh, and all of my siblings are, are good home cooks. And that's really what I'm teaching is home cooking, not restaurant mm -hmm. work. Although that, you know, I have a lot of respect for people in, in that industry. Well, that's a whole nother ball. I mean, that's serving the public and making everything marketable, and those skills have to be so, you know, perfect. But home cooking is where you want to, you know, do with kids nowadays because there's so much chemical boxed things at home and, you know, in the stores rather that are, you know, macaroni and cheese in a box and just horrible chemical stuff. So if they learn to cook at home and appreciate the home as, op as opposed to the commercial tasting food, right. I'm talking about my kids here, obviously. You know, they, they love a commercial taking, uh, tasting food, then you make, it, you make it at home homemade, and they're like, reject it. So it's a, what you're saying, what you're doing is fantastic. Yeah, uh, well, a nice thing about um, doing your own home cooking is that y you know the ingredients that go into it. Plus, the more you do it, the more skilled you get. And then you can really nurture your family in, in a concrete way uh, which I think is so satisfying, you know, that, that you're contributing to their healthy bodies, your own healthy body. Absolutely. And it's, it's a total feeling of accomplishment if you can, even as a, as a mom cooking. Yes. Okay, well, don't go away because in the next segment we're going to be cutting onions and probably crying. Stay with us. When you donate goods in response to an international disaster, it's expensive. They have to cross the sea, pass through customs, be inspected, sorted, then finally delivered. And often they arrive too late to help, making your good intentions feel a little empty. There is a better way. Cash donations are fast, simple, and allow professional relief workers to purchase supplies close at hand. Cash is best. Learn more at CIDI.org. It's our duty to serve veterans and military families who serve their country in the most difficult ways imaginable. Together, we can say thank you in so many ways. Small acts of kindness mean more than anything. With our support, veterans and military families can face even the most difficult challenges. Let's honor their service with ours. Welcome back, everybody, to Connecting Our Community. I am with Sheila Cry. She is a chef, as you can see, a chef, a knife, and an onion, and these tear ducts. We're going to try to avoid that right now. Sheila, take it away. You're going to show what? How to I'm, cut an onion? Yes, a very basic um, kitchen skill, how to dice an onion. And we have two kinds of onions here. This is a yellow onion. This is... It's purple, but we call it a red onion. Is that also a Spanish onion? Yes. Okay. And uh, typically the Spanish onions are among the sweeter kind yeah. of onions, so they'll brown more quickly. Uh, recently I've been teaching myself some dishes from Indian cuisine, and uh, it calls for red onions frequently because that's what grows mm -hmm. there. So In That's interesting, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show you uh, on this uh, red onion because I hope that it will show up very well on the camera. Um, the first thing you need to do is to identify the stem end and the root end. And I'm going to leave the, I have to cut the root end off, but, but 
I will keep pointing out which is which during the demo. Okay. So I'm going to cut off. Notice how I'm stabilizing this round vegetable. Needless to say, your knife is very sharp. Very sharp. Correct. I just That's sharpened it. Cut off the root end. Notice how I was stabilizing it. Now I've got a, a platform, and I'm going to just take my thumb and slice right through the top layer, and then the top layer comes off very quickly and easily. You don't have to spend a half an hour trying to get one layer of onion off. Yeah, that's what I do, so it's good to know. Yeah, and as long as you put your thumb on it to stabilize it. You're good. Yes. Okay, and this is uh, actually the, 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 the stage of onion cutting where there's no tears yet. Exactly. But just wait till this hits the eyeballs. If you've, if you've done this at home, you know. It's All painful. Right. Okay, so <clears throat> I have developed this technique for the young people in my cooking programs. And uh, it's a little bit different than what you will see in a knife skills book or on knife skills videos. So watch me. Okay, I am holding the knife. And this is a small size, maybe six inch chef mm -hmm. knife. I'm holding it like a sword. Karen, and I'm pinching the base between my thumb and first finger. Okay. Like that. So like this. Exactly. Okay. Just to okay. And with my non-dominant hand, I am gripping the, the onion like this. Now I'm going to slice almost all the way through. Not all the way through the, the root end because it's the root end mm -hmm. that hold all these lovely layers together. So then, when I get halfway through, I turn it around, almost all the way through, almost all the way through. So no tears yet, right? Not yet, but I'm thinking how this could turn into onion rings any second. <laughs> and I'm going to slice all the way through now. I have two halves. That was, that was the first step. So now I have my root end here, stem end here. And I'm going to hold it together so that it doesn't come apart. And I'm going to slice almost all the way to the root end. And notice how I am using my, I call this my C hand. C. There you go, C. And uh, that will hold everything together. Now notice also I, I start with the tip of the knife and just pierce it through almost to the root end and then follow with the rest of the knife. Okay. That, was, yeah. that, that was step number two. Okay. And step number three. You're I'm still maintaining its shape, I see. Right. Because that's in dice form. That's what you do to prepare to dice. Correct? Right, yeah. right. So with step number three, I'm going to hold my hand like a bear claw with my fingertips back. And my first knuckle is going to be right against the knife can you see that? It's right against the knife. Yes, we can, and we, we're hoping that the emergency room is not busy tonight. Okay, so now watch. I'm going to swing my blade forward. Just swing it forward. Beautiful. There you go. That is beautifully done. And we're not crying. If you, if you want to be very thrifty, you can cut up the last little bit. Now, do you... This is what the kids learn in your classes, yes. right? Yes, and this this root end. You don't want to use that. Unless I'm making soup, I just toss that. Okay. Sheila, yeah. do you teach your kids? You, said, you mentioned you were getting into Indian cuisine. Yes. Do you teach their kids different kinds of cuisines too? Yes, yes. In fact, um, a number of my students are from West Africa, and they like to have an African meal once every, uh, every once in a while. And so... I ask the young people to come up with their own menu, and I guide them about how to balance it using the My Plate icon for meal planning. Oh. And uh, and we have, you know, festive meals. We have uh, market back basket challenge where I bring in ingredients that could be used a number of different ways, and then they they make something. They 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 can use their cell phones then to look up recipes oh, like we all cool. do. Yeah. 
So they're, you're not just teaching them, they're teaching you their cultures. Exactly. And, cultures. and I love that because my degree from Columbia University was in anthropology. Oh. So, so I'm so lucky I don't have to learn another language. The, the world has come to me. Okay, so why don't you, Karen, try this out? You can do step number two and number three. You are kidding, right? Why not? <clears throat> I know that this is what the people at home have been waiting to okay, see. Okay, wait. So remember I said use a C hand? Yeah, C hand, right. And then point the knife down. Okay, C hand. C hand like this. Oh, like this. Right, okay. and then you're not all the way through the root end, but all the way down to the mat. All, okay. okay, I should hear I it should hit the mat. There. Here, you uh, take over. Okay. But you did it, didn't you? And well, you're, are you crying? No, not yet. Okay, okay. From so, an aptitude, perhaps, yeah. But so, other than that, no. So I noticed that I couldn't hear the mm -hmm. it come all the way to the mat. So we might not get everything. But now, of the two very knives, close. Look at that. Is this the knife you'd rather use, and this is for other things? Or how do you feel about that? Well, I can use that without any problem, but I think... For most beginning cooks, mm -hmm. that would be intimidating. And so a smaller knife size is, is a little bit more friendly. Right. And you know what's uh, even friendlier? Huh? The Cuisinart. Uh, yeah, but the blade gets Who's dull. Cheating? Who's cheating? The blade gets dull, and then you can't sharpen it. Is that right? Hasn't happened to me, and it's only been 20 years. But hey, <laughs> maybe that's a sign of not cooking enough. All right, so what what would you cut with this big knife here? What do you, what do you teach these kids? Well, um... You know, anything where you have a lot of stuff, like if you're chopping nuts or something, and you don't want to use your cuisine, maybe you forgot your cuisine art and your... I got a nut chopper, too. But anyway, that's another thing. <laughs> you just push the thing down a couple times, and out comes your... Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, I don't have... Should everyone have a beautiful set of knives? I don't have a beautiful set of knives that are sharp. You know, my feeling is uh, regarding equipment and spices and even ingredients, I think you should... Just focus on what you want to make and get what you need for that dinner or that mm -hmm. dish or whatever it is. And then gradually you'll accumulate the things that, that make sense to you and your family. Is there anyone that you look up to in the cooking, baking, and chef world? Oh, so many. I'll just mention two. Uh, I've, I've met, met the great chef Jacques Pepin. And I've been so starstruck, I could hardly even say hello and would yeah. you sign my cookbook, please? <laughs> he's famous. He, oh, famous. he's, yeah. I, with his cookbooks, I feel like he is in the kitchen mm -hmm. guiding me. And, and so, you know, a great, great teacher. Uh, Anyone and, local in the Washington, D.C. area? Oh, so, again, so, so many, many, so yeah. many. But but let me just mention, if you want to access some really interesting videos about cooking, uh, go to uh, hertzman.com, H-E-R-T-Z-M-A-N-N, two N's. And uh, my friend Peter Hertzman, who has written a book about knife skills, offers all these videos that he's done himself, and he is really a pro. Okay, and you know what? Kids like to access YouTube and videos, and so that should be no yeah. problem. All right, so um, your website, excelbeyondthebell.org, that's very important for people to know because well, well, that, that's, that's for Excels. That's, that's for Excel Beyond the Bell, but um, if they want more recipes and find out about what, what I do, mm -hmm. um, my, my company is called Young Chefs. Okay, Young Chefs. So, and do you have so a website for that? Yes, ouryoungchefs.com. Okay, that's Sheila's website. Yeah. Okay, so for more information on your program, though, it's excelbeyondthebell.org. Right. Right? Okay, and that they can find information about the Excel program. Yours is Young Chefs. Yes, and, and for instance, if people are interested in summer camps, I, ah, that's a great I, idea. I do that in my home kitchen, so a maximum eight young people. That's great. Okay, in your kitchen. You must have a very nice kitchen. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, Sheila. You're thank so you welcome. for the knife lesson. It's a good thing that uh, people at home never saw any blood. <laughs>
Or tears. Or tears, that's right. That's, okay. So you can go to the Connecting Our Community blog on mymcmedia.org. That's a website about this entire station and everything on it. And Sheila Cry, thank you so much. I'm Karen Allen, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.